Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. So typically, I haven't been doing many videos between my main collective reading videos which if you are new here i do those main collective readings every monday wednesday and friday at 12 pm eastern standard time but in addition to those videos over the course of the years that I've had this channel, I do like to create podcast videos and what I call mini readings, which are basically just shorter messages, downloads, and reading videos that are usually more so for specific portions of our overall collective here on YouTube. So, I am wanting to get back into creating more of that additional content and I would really love to hear from you in the comments if you have any personal suggestions or recommendations for what topics you'd like to hear spoken on or what type of reading videos you would like to hear on the channel because of course all the videos that are created here are co-creations from an energetic standpoint because just by listening and being present here, wherever here is for you, regardless of time, space, or distance, your vibration is sensed and it's part of creating these videos. So I do just want to start this particular video with a huge thank you to you for being here, for your love, your support, and of course, for simply sharing and emanating your own powerful, unique frequency here. Okay, so I'm going to start by shuffling the traditional tarot cards. In today's video, I specifically would like to talk about how we're going to be collectively impacted by the new moon in Taurus, which is happening on May 7th, specifically at 11.22 p.m. Eastern Time. You can, of course translate that into whatever time zone you are in personally. I know that we will experience this new moon at different times, of course, depending on where we live. But the first card I have here is the four of swords in the reverse position. So this card is about coming out of some kind of isolation and what I'm hearing is that many of us have been through a very chaotic and turbulent time. Just like the sign of Taurus is very stable, very fixed in a sense, I feel as though we are coming into an energy that is feeling a lot less chaotic, that is feeling a lot more grounded and stabilized. Now, many of us are being given the space mentally, emotionally, energetically, maybe even physically to regroup and really recenter on what's important to us, on our vision, on our goals, on getting ourselves back into balance. I'm hearing prioritizing. So you may feel as though you are really beginning to get organized, but in many cases, I'm hearing this won't be a literal physical organization, but much deeper, almost like you are organizing your energy or organizing your thoughts or your mind or these goals that you've created because it's almost this breath of fresh air energy after the very intense solar eclipse that we went through on April 8th, where around that time, the energy was incredibly intense and very emotionally charged for many of us. And they're really just, it's almost like we were experiencing these powerful activations, but all we could really do was sit with the energy because it was too overwhelming to really process and integrate. We really didn't have that space in April 
portal to be integrating that energy fully. But what I'm getting as we are entering this new moon in Taurus is that we are finally getting that space to breathe, process, and integrate all of those massive downloads that actually occurred around the solar eclipse at the beginning of April. I'm also hearing that if you've been hermiting a little bit because of the stormy or chaotic energy, you might actually find yourself coming out of isolation a bit. So desiring to socialize or connect more with people around you or with your community after a period of time where, again, you very much may have been kind of isolating yourself just to attempt to remain sane during those very intense astrological transits in April. We're also getting the sun card here. Now, this can be connected with awakened divine masculine energy. So you might be connecting with this internally or externally because, of course, we all do have a balance of divine feminine and divine masculine energies internally, but we can also connect with these energies externally as well. So with this awakened divine masculine energy, I'm hearing that you might be feeling really positively motivated, almost this surge of energy toward certain action steps. So, but I'm hearing uncertainty. It's a very complex kind of dynamic because while you might be feeling this drive, feeling this motivation to take certain positive action steps towards your dreams and goals, you also might be noticing certain things coming up that signal uncertainty to you, that signal that there is so much that you simply don't fully have the answers to, that you don't know how it's going to go or how it's going to play out. So this new moon in Taurus is really asking us if we can remain centered and stabilized and continue to regroup ourselves and integrate that energy and take those positive inspired action steps forward regardless of the uncertainty which of course Taurus itself is a sign that doesn't like surprises that doesn't like the unstable the uncertain and what I'm getting with this shift energetically is it's not so much unstable again it's a very stabilized grounded energy yet it's still uncertain. So while it feels more peaceful and more stable, there are still so many unknowns. And I feel the real question arising here for so many of us is how to stand confidently in the face of the unknown and continue to take those positive steps forward that we're feeling inspired to without losing our footing emotionally or allowing the uncertainty to get us trapped in anxious cycles. So what else can I channel here about these inspiration steps forward? I did get the 10 of pentacles. So this tells me that as you are taking those inspired steps forward, you are going to find yourself really aligning with a great deal of abundance and success. But again, the challenge here is allowing yourself to walk in the dark, to take steps forward, even if it feels almost as though you are blind to the outcomes here. Now, there does seem to be something that is occurring that is catching you off guard or by surprise or that you're not seeing. And I'm hearing it's very rare for you to be caught off guard by anything because you are very intuitive and you're really coming up here as the high priestess reversed. Someone who typically is very connected to the divine, but here with the reversed energy, again, it's almost like a blind spot, like something you're not clearly seeing or fully seeing or that will catch you by surprise. So I want to know what this so-called blind spot is. Okay, we have the six of pentacles in the upright position. So this has to do with generosity, giving, providing support or assistance. Maybe there's something you're not seeing about a person or situation that you're giving a lot to. This is interesting. We also have the Hierophant reversed. So something breaking with tradition or some kind of role reversal here. Maybe you are giving to someone or something 
that should be giving to you or isn't giving back to you in a balanced way going against some kind of agreement or contract this almost could be someone or something you're connected to that you are really freely giving to that you're really supporting and giving a lot to for some reason i'm hearing ride or die energy like you are really loyal or really committed to this thing this could be anything by the way and for some of you this may not resonate as at all because of course these mini readings do tend to be much more specific than my main collective readings. So we pick up a lot of different threads of energy and it's even more essential to really utilize your intuition and only take what is really relevant for you personally. Now I am picking up that broken dreams are playing a role here someone feeling like their own dreams are shattered, like they are feeling deeply unhappy or unfulfilled. But I want to know why you are connected to this person or thing. The chariot, overcoming obstacles, determination, self-discipline. Maybe you are really feeling determined to remain connected in with whatever this is, whether it's a job, a partnership, a contract, a relationship. It's like you have this stubbornness around staying connected to this person or thing, which I don't mean that negatively. This is a really beautiful trait. I'm sensing a lot of fierce loyalty from you when it comes to whatever this is. And yet there again, there's like this role reversal, like this should be something that's feeding you in return or giving back to you in some kind of way. And it doesn't seem to be doing that. In fact, with the 10 of wands reversed, whatever this is, is becoming very heavy. It's feeling like a burden and you might even be feeling this thing blocking your sacral chakra energy. I keep hearing something about a contract. Maybe this is a job contract, some kind of agreement, a partnership. It feels like there could be something legal involved here. And with the four of wands and the king of wands reversed. So, wow, these are like two opposite energies because there is all of this happiness this celebratory energy but then there's someone here coming up as the king of wands reversed this could be a masculine energy which again could be related to a male or a female gender doesn't matter here but someone who's more so in their masculine energy this seems to be a person that is being deceptive in some kind of way or being very selfish very self-focused this could be a boss. I, I just, I do feel there may be some element of control. So this person either being in a position above you or wanting to kind of control you in some way, whether it's a family member, a friend, a coworker, a boss, whoever this is. I feel as though spirit is asking you to release some kind of pain here i'm hearing a thorn in your side for some reason i'm seeing the imagery of a deer maybe this is a doe and i feel this imagery around innocence around purity around i don't want to say gullibility but it's almost like you have such a purity and such an innocence about you that you could never imagine someone attempting to deceive you or trying to kind of one-up you in this way or control you in this way. That might be why this has been a blind spot because you've wanted to see the best in this person or situation, but it's become such a heavy burden. Wow, I just, I felt this intense energy almost like a burden being lifted and it's almost like your spirit guides want to say you don't have to carry the weight of this burden anymore i don't know if this is a person a relationship a job a lifestyle an agreement but it just feels like you've been through self-discipline and hard work really forcing yourself to remain connected to a person or situation that has become like a burden for you and 
Spirit is saying here, it's safe to release the burden, to forgive. Forgiveness is the way here. Forgiveness meaning to release both yourself and the other person from the past between the two of you. Or again, this could be a job, a circumstance, whatever this is. I just feel this need to release the past. I also feel that Whatever this thing or dynamic was, it may have been something that actually played into keeping you in a state of isolation with that four of wands reversed energy or four of swords, sorry, reversed energy. Although the four of wands may play a role here too, because I don't believe in coincidences. So maybe I said that because there was a four of wands reversed energy here, meaning a breakup, a separation, a disconnect, or Maybe that's what you have been avoiding. You've been avoiding some kind of disconnect, but you've found yourself being pushed out of some kind of isolation that I feel this person or situation may have kept you in. Now, it may have been inadvertent, so they may have not been keeping you in isolation intentionally. I just feel that whatever this was, whether it was a job, something in your life, a friendship, a family member... Whatever it was, it's almost like it was such a heavy burden that it naturally kept you isolated because you didn't really have the energy to be going out and connecting with other people and really living your life to the fullest. You were just constantly giving and giving with this six of pentacles. And now it's almost like the scales are coming back up for rebalancing. There has to be a rebalancing of the karmic scales here, meaning everything that you've given to this person to this situation know that even if you choose to forgive and walk away everything you've given hasn't been lost because nothing is lost in the divine economy i believe that's a quote from neville goddard but essentially whatever you give is going to come back to you but it might come back to you through another person place or source wow i'm getting a really powerful download that part of why this has been so hard to let go is it may have felt like an investment where you have already invested so much time so much love so much energy into a particular person thing or dynamic and so you've been at this stalemate this kind of two of swords energy afraid to to let go but also feeling overburdened by holding on and part of that fear of letting go may have been that you've had this awareness that you've made some kind of energy investment here and you don't want to lose that investment but what I'm getting from your guides is that again nothing is lost in the divine economy so essentially Everything that you poured into this person or situation or this job, whatever it is for you, is going to come back to you. But I'm hearing you have to be willing to give yourself the freedom to start over, to give yourself the freedom to release the burden, to really open up that sacral chakra energy that this thing or person or situation has been blocking and in moving towards what really feels best and most aligned for you, even if it involves letting go of this person or situation, I'm seeing that you will, in a sense, open the floodgates and allow in the return on the investment, even if it comes from a completely different person, thing, or source. So I feel that, again, this may have been a very specific reading, but if this was for you, I feel this may have connected in a really personal way. Now, if you do want a system in this releasing process, especially if this is a person or relationship. Part of the fear around releasing, around letting go is A, that somehow by letting go, we're going to be hurting the other person emotionally, or B, that if we do let go, we are going to lose the good parts of the connection, the parts that were really connected with our soul. But when we properly release these soul ties or soul connections, what we're actually doing is pruning the garden, so to speak. So we're removing the parts of the connection that were detrimental to us and to the other person while allowing what is left, what is truly healthy and aligned for us in the connection to thrive and to grow 
So know that if you do let go or walk away from a person or situation, really following your highest good, you aren't going to lose the parts of that thing that were really aligned with you. In fact, you're going to leave space for them to flourish. Now, of course, that might not happen visibly right away. For example, if you release a soul tie with a particular person, it may take some time in the physical world for the two of you to come back together in a more aligned, healthier way. But it will happen because, again, you are just pruning the parts of the connection that were toxic or detrimental to you. Now, if you would like assistance with this process, I've recently created a really powerful subliminal meditation for releasing soul ties. I have actually personally used this meditation in my own life. And let me tell you, if you meditate with this, especially if you meditate with it using the process for releasing soul ties that I share in a recent podcast video that you can find on my channel, on releasing soul ties these two processes combined i have found to be extremely effective for removing the detrimental draining and negative aspects of connections while still really honoring the other person's soul and releasing them to their highest good as well so subliminals are particularly powerful so subliminals are particularly powerful for this kind of energy work because our energy is really mainly connected to our subconscious mind. It's actually the subconscious that controls 95% of our thoughts, actions, and outcomes in life. So when we reprogram what's happening in the subconscious mind, it's like a fast track to manifesting in our lives and in this case to clearing out negativity or negative connections from our field so this releasing soul ties subliminal is in the love and relationships category on my app now as you can see on the screen this is just showing you around my app sound and soulful this app is such a passion project for me i was working on it for two years before releasing it and prior to that I had been using subliminals for years on my own and I had just seen such powerful results from them in my own life that I wanted to share my own personal library of subliminals with all of you as well and now those are available through this app so you can find the app by searching sound and soulful in the apple app store or the google play store you can also download it directly by clicking a link that I will be leaving in the pinned comment and the description box underneath this video. When you do click that link, you can download the app and sign up for a seven day free trial account which allows you to try out any of my subliminals completely free for seven days. There are over 130 subliminals already in the app for essentially every area of life they're all available in 10 different background sound options depending on your preference and you can also create your own custom private playlists in the app so again the name of the app is sound and soulful and the link to download it is underneath this video so i'm going to go ahead and close the reading with one final message from the work your light oracle deck i haven't pulled from this in a little while but i imagine that many of us are working with our inner light around this new moon in taurus by the way i would love to hear from you in the comments wow before i get into that this card is so powerful that just came out birthing a new age birthing new creations dreaming a new world into being but as i was saying we will channel more from this card but if you would like to really lock in that new moon energy i would recommend writing in the comments what you are creating in this new moon in taurus whether it's something you are manifesting something you are doing within yourself some kind of energy work a clearing within yourself creating some kind of an idea a dream a goal a vision what are you creating in your life right now and it's most powerful if you say it in the present tense so i am creating and you can fill in the blank in the comments 
But I guess with this card, one thing we are all creating or birthing into being is this new age. And a powerful message I was getting from this card from someone's guides is that some personal goal, dream, or vision that you've created for yourself is actually assisting the collective because it's playing a major role in birthing this new age into being. Even if you might not see how your personal role fits into the grander scheme of things, do not underestimate the power of your personal visions, manifestations, and creations because they were given to you for a reason. So that feels like such a beautiful note to close the reading on. Thank you so much again for tuning in today. Of course, if you do resonate with my energy, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram at Magnetize Yourself, where I post more energy updates, inspiration, and information. Of course, if you do feel guided to it, the link to download my sound and soulful subliminals app and start reprogramming your subconscious mind to manifest your desires is in the pinned comment and description box underneath the video. Otherwise, I am sending you all so much love today. Have a beautiful, magical remainder of your day, and I will connect with you here again in the next video.